This is Record Breaker, the show where ordinary people perform extraordinary feats that put their names in the record books and make a difference in people's lives. My name's Arthur Greeno, and I'm the Record Breaker. Meet Arthur Greeno. Arthur is the prominent owner of two Chick-fil-A restaurants. Chick-fil-A is one of the leading quick service restaurant chains in the country. He's been married to his best friend, Noel, for 18 years and is the father of six children. Arthur is a published author and a nationally recognized speaker, but most importantly, he is the record breaker. It's been said that Arthur has a PhD in creativity, so when he looked for a way to market his restaurants, he did what he was programmed to do. Dream big, really big, like record breaking big. We decided to create the world's largest milkshake, but what we didn't realize is the world's largest milkshake that it was a lot bigger than what we were doing. But we decided to do a five foot tall milkshake. It was a phenomenal event. We did it out in the community, got a lot of publicity off it, had about 1,800 people show up. But we still didn't have a world record and that was what our goal was. In 2008, after creating the giant milkshake, it was official. Arthur had been bitten by the record breaking bug. He had to do it again, but this time he knew he'd have to break a world record. We're gonna create the world's largest lemonade. In order to make this happen, we needed a giant cup. That in and of itself was a challenge, being that Walmart didn't carry a, a cup any bigger than 16 ounces. We basically made a giant replica of what a Chick-fil-A cup of lemonade would look like. This ended up being a nine foot cup that actually held about 1140 gallons of liquid in it. Then we had um, to overcome some challenges as far as squeezing lemons. This lemonade was gonna take 11,000 lemons. They're all from California. Um, Sunkist is a co-op of over 6,500 grower members and our growers in Sunkist donated 108 cases of lemons, which is about 12,400 lemons that are used to make this uh, Guinness Book of World's record. Okay, on your mark, get set, go! In order to cut and squeeze all these by hand, we decided to have a contest that our customers could join in and they could see who squeezed the lemons the fastest. The fastest team to squeeze six cases of lemons each will get free Chick-fil-A for a year. So we had this nine foot tall cup that held 840 gallons of our fresh squeezed Chick-fil-A lemonade that over 100 customers participated in, in squeezing 11,000 lemons to help us set a new Guinness World Record. How cool is that? <laughs> Happy Lemonade Day. About a year later, some providence in China made some, some weird blueberry drink and it, it beat us out on our soft drink category for the Guinness World Records. So it really kind of ticked me off and I said, you know what, I want to be back in the book for more than a year, so we're going to set a new world record. So in 2010, Arthur was back at it when he built the world's largest cup of iced tea. Today, Arthur Greeno and Chick-fil-A were actually setting a brand new world record. It was Arthur's idea to uh, try and make the world's largest iced tea, which is a it's just a challenge in itself considering what a process it is to make iced tea rather than the lemonade that he did last time. We decided to make our new Guinness World Record. This one was a, uh, the world's largest sweet tea. Well, it had to be made basically like any other iced tea. So he had to construct a large tea bag, which he did in his own very insane process of sewing together coffee filters and using Chick-fil-A's own blend of tea. We need to have a 92 pound bag of tea one bag, a giant, one giant tea bag. They just don't make tea bags this big. We were noticing that our filter material that we use at Chick-fil-A to filter all of our, our oil is the same type of material as a tea bag. So basically, we took all these filters and we sewed them together to make a giant tea bag. And we took all the tea and we dumped it into this giant uh, makeshift tea bag in order to qualify for the Guinness World Record. Essentially, it's just a scaled up version of how you would prepare a regular iced tea. It's just a lot more insane because you have to have so much boiling water, so much ice to make sure it's the right temperature. He endured a lot of challenges to make sure that it was up to par and as cold as it needed to be to qualify as iced tea. Make sure we get every drop of water. It took over 900 gallons of water. Now how it works, you guys take it. Alright, you got 
not as simple as just the liquid. We had to have that, that giant cup over two thirds filled with ice because that's technically an iced tea. We actually had to bring in these giant cubes of ice to actually set the world record. We incorporated our, our customers and our guests to move all these giant um, one foot blocks of ice uh, all the way across the parking lot, all the way up to the cup where we, we got to throw it into the cup and finalize this iced tea. 900 gallons of water in that thing, over a thousand pounds of sugar in this cup, as well as about 3,500 pounds of ice to, to complete this giant thing of iced tea. Today we had the very first attempt for the Guinness World Records record for the largest iced tea, which was an especially big challenge today considering how hot it is. And after measuring and taking the temperature, I can con officially confirm that Arthur Greeno and Chick-fil-A have set a new record for the largest iced tea at 912 gallons. Congratulations. But now he's attempting to break another world record. I'm so proud of my big ball. I mean, what's not to like about it? However, this time it's on a much grander scale. For a number of years, I've been looking for something for us to do for Chick-fil-A, something that people would remark about, something that families would say, did you do that last year, or are you gonna do that this year? I saw this giant ball where people would climb into it and roll around. I thought, okay, that would be hilarious to set up a giant race in one of those things. I knew that was the next event we needed to do. That would be our hamster ball relay. Meet the Zorb, or as some call it, the human hamster ball. It stands nine feet in diameter with a compartment inside, just big enough for a full-grown man to run in, just like a cute little hamster. <laughs> so the hamster ball relay is going to be a mile and a half relay race that five people would jump in a hamster ball and roll their one-fifth of a mile and a half, and that would complete the relay. However, the Guinness World Record part of it would be that the first 100 meters of each leg of the race that they would do, they had to be unassisted. Unassisted, as far as Guinness goes, means that they need to be self-propelled. It can be down a hill, it can be on a straightaway, with no one else touching their hamster balls in order to set this world record. For Arthur, going big by setting a world record only matters if you leave a wake of charity and generosity behind you. It's this passion to help others that drives him. I've set Guinness world records before, and at the end of the day, great, I'm a record setter. But what we wanted to do is do something for somebody else, do something for the community. We chose Little Lighthouse because this is a school, a preschool for special needs kids. They have a phenomenal organization. When we went out and visited with them, we kind of fell in love with them. We fell in love with their programs, fell in love with their passion, fell in love with the kids. If we can do a giant event like this and we can help change other people's lives, that's more about what I'm interested in. The Little Lighthouse is a preschool for kids with special needs. Every kid gets to come for free, so it's tuition free for the children. We get all of our funding from uh, donations. They get to come here and get therapy and uh, special education. It's a really fun place. It's uh, one of the best places in the world. The Little Lighthouse has helped my family tremendously when it comes to my son Charles because he has no hands and a short arm, so it's, they've helped him be able to use his feet to do normal stuff that we would do. The Little Lighthouse has really helped us with Micah. He was born right on time and he does not, he's almost six and he does not walk, does not talk. Um, the Little Lighthouse has really encouraged those things with him um, and they, they work with him in all the ways that he needs to be helped. This is Reese's first year here at the Little Lighthouse and the um, available technologies that they have here, especially the head pod that he's recently started using has been wonderful um, because it's allowed him to be much more interactive with um, his environment, with the new friends he's made in his class, and be much more independent. This event is going to be the first of its kind. It's going to be called the Hamster Ball Relay. It's new for everybody. Mm -hmm. Every facet of it's new, and uh, it's just, uh, just another crazy thing to do. And, and, and then, of course, uh, when we raise this money, we'd like to be able to contribute to your organization oh, when it's all done. Well, thank you so, so much for picking us. You know, we really appreciate it. Coming up on The Record Breaker. I was at work and my managers came to the back and said, there's someone here to see you and they handed me this business card. 
This business card is from the inspector and investigator of amusement rides and hot water heaters safety standards division of the Oklahoma Department of Labor. Apparently, in the state of Oklahoma, they said that they don't allow Zorbs. Arthur is contacted by the Department of Labor with news that could shut his entire event down. Arthur Greeno is a three-time world record holder. He is attempting to break his fourth world record by getting the most amount of people in a Zorb in a 24-hour period. Now that I had this big idea, I had to get a Zorb. I need to order 20 of these. I made a contact with, a, with this company in China to create, to, to buy all these Zorbs out. And I would literally get these phone calls in the middle of the night from China. And I remember my wife rolling over at one point and saying, Arthur, there's a prank call, so, you know, some Chinese lady. And I jumped up and said, that's for me, that's for me. So I grabbed the phone, and of course, we didn't understand each other, so I said, well, let's email. And somehow we worked it out where I got online. She probably has a translator program, and we started typing back and forth so we understood each other. There was a lot of things I had to learn about importing these giant hamster balls into the United States. It wasn't as easy as me just giving them a credit card. They wouldn't take a credit card. They made me Western Union this money to this company that I didn't even know if it really exists. You hear about all these stories online about all these um, all these fraudulent companies. And so I, I asked her, how do I know your company actually exists? And she says, well, I'll just take pictures of the employees and send them to you. And I'm thinking, you know what? I could take pictures of my employees and send them to me and, and it might mean the same thing. So I was really nervous on, is this actually gonna happen? I had to go to Western Union and, and mail some money. And I, what I learned when I went to Western Union is that if you mail more than $10,000 to a foreign country, you can be labeled as a terrorist. At that point, uh, I learned that I was able to make three different payments uh, of different amounts at different Western unions to get around the system. Right now, what we're doing is we are waiting on the Zorbs to get here. Hopefully at any time, then these, these Zorbs will show up. I don't know what condition they really look like. Um, I have no idea. Arthur Greeno? Yes, sir. All right, somebody said you wanted some big balls. So I got a bunch of them here for you. The Zorbs are finally here. They arrived They arrived at my store in this giant rig. You got a forklift or something? How big are they? I had no clue how big these would be. Yeah, it's, uh, it's four pallets front at uh, 2,500 pounds. 2,500 pounds. Yeah. I mean, it's... Okay, the, the dolly option's out. Well, we don't have a forklift. Um, I mean, yes, I knew they're gonna be big, but 20 of these Zorbs that came from China, it came on this giant, like, moving truck. I thought it was just gonna be like a small little box truck. And, and this big, burly uh, truck driver steps out and, and, and expects me to have a forklift. Well, I'm a chicken restaurant. I don't have forklifts. I got these little dollies and a bunch of employees that move things around. I have an idea. Well, the Garnet Corporation is next door, and I know that they do a lot of flanges and stuff, and so I think they have a forklift. Everyone loves free food, so hopefully they can, they have a pal, um, they have a forklift that they can come um, give us a hand because we're kind of stuck. I uh, can't really go anywhere without it, so uh, that's kind of where we're at right now, and uh, let's just see what, see what these guys say. And we went by to our neighbor and never underestimate the power of chicken. Hey, is it possible we're trying to unload some things from a truck and I don't have a forklift. Would you guys be able to come give us a hand? Really? You guys are easy. We gave them a party tray and they brought over their giant forklift and they were able to fortunately help us pull all these Zorbs out. Thank you so much and thanks for coming to eat my chickens. Well, that was pretty good. Thank you. And I have appreciate your help. Thank you. Holding an event like the Hamster Ball Relay takes a lot of time and commitment. One of the challenges that we had for an event like this is we're trying to raise money for an organization, so any money that we spend on marketing essentially will take away from the money that we give to the organization. Channel 2 came out and did a little show on the Zorb racing against one of the other uh, TV personalities, and that gave us some exposure. Another one of the stations called me one day and said, we want you out here for a morning show. So at six in the morning, I was um, heading out that way with, with Zorb in hand and uh, ready to get this thing going. We've been doing some promotional stuff with some of the local football teams. And we decided that maybe we could implement the Zorbs into this to get a little bit of extra publicity. And we actually were able to participate in their halftime show. 
So we decided to bring out the Zorbs and put their mascots, mascots in, the, in, the, in these ready? giant Zorbs, and they would have a race. And mind. the winners won some free Chick-fil-A coupons. We had a lot of fun with that, but then on top of that, we decided to bring in some parachuting cows. So we brought these helicopters in, and they threw out 800 cows with parachutes on them um, that landed on the crowd. Now, before you get all weird about it, um, like in the WKRP scenario, these were small, little, plush, nine, nine-inch cows. It was a lot of fun and made a remarkable experience for everyone that was there. Coming up, Arthur Greeno is visited by the state of Oklahoma. My employees came and showed me this business card. It's for the Department of Labor. It's, and they said, there's an inspector here to see you. Of course, my heart started racing, and I went out there and found out from the Oklahoma Department of Labor that there's, Zorbs are not allowed in the state of Oklahoma. I don't know what I'm gonna do now. Arthur Greeno is attempting to break his fourth world record by getting the most amount of people in a Zorb in a 24-hour period. That is, until he was visited by the state of Oklahoma. I walk out of my lobby, and the Department of Labor is out there, and they want to talk to me. And anytime the Department of Labor comes into a restaurant, you're always nervous anyway. Not that we do anything wrong ever, but he, just, he shows up and he, he tells me the state of Oklahoma does not allow Zorbs in the state of Oklahoma and how I have to be a licensed amusement park ride operator just to have one of these and use it. We possibly can't do the event because we're not licensed in the state of Oklahoma. I convinced him to come back on Monday morning and we would inflate the Zorbs and let him climb around inside these giant hamster balls and inspect them. He came back out. He's on the phone constantly with his boss at the Department of Labor where basically they had not seen Zorbs like this. The Zorbs that they were concerned about were a different type of Zorbs, but ours, um, because they had holes on each end, if there was an accident, the person could climb out. And he basically said, we're gonna have to come and inspect them all. Inspect them all? He wanted to inspect all 23 of these Zorbs. Now the goofy part about this is that all, most of these balls are all brand new. And the fact that we're having to inspect every single one of them, to me, is silly. However, it's not my rules, we're playing by their game. And so we're out here at 8 o'clock in the morning, three days before the event, inflating every single thing we have. Now, I'm all about safety, but come on, guys. Really? He climbed in them. He, um, uh, we tried to get him to roll down a ramp. He refused, but he did inspect everyone to make sure there's no leaks. He made us pay him $50 and gave us a certificate of approval that we're official amusement park ride operators. And we're good to go. We've officially got our certificate. This pretty little piece of paper, which no one probably ever cares about, but uh, we have it just in case. And uh, now the only thing we need to worry about is what's going to happen with the weather. Is it going to rain? Is it not? Uh, there's a chance of rain on that day, and, um, and the temperature is supposed to drop. Coming up. So I get there in the morning of the event, and it's cold, it's raining, it's just not looking good. Arthur Greeno is a three-time world record holder, and right now he's attempting to break his fourth world record. But it hasn't been without its laundry list of obstacles to overcome. He's had a special order 20 Zorbs from the manufacturer in China. After several delays and mountains of red tape, they finally made it to Oklahoma just in time for the event. But then, the Department of Labor threatened to shut the event down, telling him his Zorbs were illegal in the state of Oklahoma. So he worked with them and got each and every Zorb inspected before his event. But now, Mother Nature is letting her displeasure with the event be known. My fear today, I just don't want it to rain um, like it is in the moment, um, only because I don't want people out here miserable. I don't think there's really anything that could happen that would make people not have a good time because this is really fun. I don't think that there's any way this can be a failure. It just depends on what your definition of success is. I think last night or the night before we had a cold front come through, so now we've got overcast skies. Uh, it started sleeting and raining on us this morning. I said, Lord, please don't let it rain. Now it's sleeting. Lord, I'm so sorry. Please don't let it sleet either. Let's it's not have snow. anything falling from the sky, please. We're going to have a snowball. Um, Guinness snowball. World Record snowball race. Then we get here and it's freezing to death and then I, everybody's questioning whose idea was this, so. Oh, it's cold. Oh, it's early. Oh, it's going to rain. It's, it's, gonna, it's getting messy real fast. We're already going to have to sh probably shut down the, uh, uh, the slides because it's just, it, you just can't push one of those orbs up the slides with it um, being icy. 
Uh, you know, I don't know if people are going to want to come out if it's leading out here. But even with all these tests and trials, the day of the event has come, and despite Mother Nature's protests, hundreds of people have arrived and are excited to start the first race. So originally our team name is Blue Balls. We all work together um, in the operating room and we wear blue scrubs. And so we thought Team Blue Balls was a good way to do it since we're going to be rolling around in big balls. <laughs> Me going first and then I think somebody second and third because we heard that's not the hardest part. And then the fourth part was the hardest. So she's doing the fourth and she's doing the last. She's the lightest so she can fly down the hill. Yeah. I'm, I'm the anchor. I'm the team captain. I'm yes. the team captain. <laughs> okay, she's the anchor. <laughs> Hey guys, let's put your hands together for uh, Chick-fil-A and Arthur Greedo for putting on this great event, the Tater Racing. Are you guys excited to be here? Are you guys ready to be a part of a world record? This is the important part. The first 100 yards is the Guinness qualifying yards, okay? We, our first 100 meters, sorry. So we have, you have to be unassisted as you're going. And if your team touches the balls, uh, then... Uh, then you have to start over. It's not super easy, that's why we're setting a world record. Okay? Are we ready to roll? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go! It seems Arthur's luck has changed, but then again, maybe not. I gotta go. Join us next time for another episode of The Record Breaker.